Okay, just so we keep the record straight, today's project is a uh, Asus VK278 computer monitor. It's a 27 inch flat panel computer monitor. And the symptoms are that it does not turn on when you plug it in. The power indicator light just kind of flickers or blinks at you. Um, I think it's in the power supply. And of course, it's already fixed at this point, but. Uh, I uh, wanted to make sure I recorded the model sticker for you, but uh, stay tuned and you'll see what we did to the power supply to get it going. Okay, good afternoon. We're joining this repair in progress. This is a ASUS computer monitor. This is the circuit board back off of it, the LCD that goes on top of here. Um, and it was not turning on after a power glitch. You know, the, it wasn't a surge per se, it was more like a, a sag, you know, and things blacked out at the place and then it wouldn't turn back on. So um, they asked me to take a look at it because this is actually a fairly valuable monitor. It's a nice big, like 27 inch computer monitor. This isn't a little crapper. Um, so it makes sense to fix it because it is a valuable monitor. If it was, you know, a throwaway monitor that somebody picked up in the trash and was 10 years old, maybe not, but this is a 2012 uh, monitor. So anyway, I took it apart, looked at the power supply, I had to cut the um, jacket on this one just so I could read the value. Um, we're going to be recapping the power supply if you haven't guessed. Um, what I found in here is this cap is bloated and this one's bloated. This one's got a little bit of a leak in it. And these are supposed to be a thousand microfarad at 25 volts. So let's take the one with the leak in the top. We'll put it in our little tester and turn our tester on and we'll see what the tester says about it. Do, do, do. So this capacitor has a voltage loss of 13%. Its capacitance is 512.2 microfarad and its ESR is 3.6 ohms. That would be a bad capacitor considering it's supposed to be a thousand microfarad and it's only reading half of that. Here's the one without the leak in the top. This one did not have the leak. We'll test that. Um, it's obviously got a little bit of bloat to it. And this one has a voltage loss of 24%, a capacitance of 140.8, and an ESR of 6 ohms. This one that looks better physically because it's not leaking is actually more crap. So here's two new 1000 microfarad capacitors. Let's compare that to the value of a new capacitor. And we're going to recap this whole power supply despite the fact that it might not be wholly necessary. I don't know if that lead's going to make good contact, but we'll find out in a second. If it says no component, then I'll know. Yeah, no unknown damaged whatever, so I gotta uh, do a little trick there to get that one to lay down in there. There we go, we'll do it that way. That's kind of cool the way they did these because you can get stuff in there and doesn't matter if you put it in backwards or whatever, it will work. Okay, capacitor, voltage loss 1%, capaci capacitance 1136 microfarad with an ESR of 0 0.14. So that is a new capacitor, that is a healthy capacitor. Um, you know, obviously if it's supposed to be a thousand microfarad and it's checking out at, you know, 990 or 980 or something. I'm not going to consider that one terrible, but when they're checking out at 100 or 500, you know, half their value, these are supposed to be a 10 to 20% tolerance. So anyway, those two went here and here. We're going to just put those in, and then we'll proceed down the row and we'll test some of the other cap values as they come out. But uh, these were definitely the bad capacitors, the obviously bad capacitors. There are some different makes in here. These this one and there's another one over here that are different manufacturer and the big boy's different but uh, we'll go through them and test them as we go so start by putting these in uh, it's probably worth mentioning in this case there are some spots like C934 or C what is that 613 or whatever these were not populated 
and they were wave soldered, so it was soldered over. So uh, these are the two that I actually changed. In this case, it was uh, 939, and I think that says 918. So the next one I'm going to go for, the, we did these two, so I'm going to go for these ones over here, which are supposed to be 470 mic. And we'll start with this one. So just use our little desoldering my bob here and actually I want to get a trash can or something to blow this thing out on. I could technically blow it out in my um, but I'm not going to. So I do have a little bit of a trash over there but we're going to bring the trash can around. There we go. And now we're almost loose. They bent the leads on these just in a way. There we go. Got that one out. So this is supposed to be 470 mic at 35 volt. Let's see if it actually is 470 mic or if it's crap like the other one was. Four hundred and seventy seven mic with actually this one checks out to be just fine, so again, just because this is a client unit, I intend to replace all the electrolytic capacitors, but it looks like only these ones are the ones that are smoked so far, so we'll go through if I find another bad one, we'll report it, but uh, I'm just going to continue to recap throughout, okay, so no major news here. These two were hideously bad. The remainder of the capacitors that were in the circuit, which are over here, these generally tested, if not on spec or good, pretty close. Okay? Now, my little tester over here will show an obviously bad capacitor, but something that's close, we're only testing it with 3 or 4 volts, so, you know, it might show okay but when you put it up to high voltage it is bad um, you know for the safety sake it was an additional one two three four five seven capacitors this was the only expensive one at about five dollars the rest of these were fifty cents so one two three dollars plus eight dollars eight dollars in capacitors to you know have the extra insurance that it's going to be right and we're not going to have to go back into it again really soon so I'm going to get the rest of the pieces, parts, we're going to put this back together and make sure it works, but uh, as far as I can tell, that was definitely what was wrong with it. Um, those capacitors were obviously bad and leaking major voltage. Okay, we'll put this back together. Okay, so we got it back together, kind of. This is bench test. The board needs to be, the back metal thing with the boards on it needs to be screwed to the LCD, but um, anyway, it's good for bench testing. Hit the power button. Blue light now. Before we just had a blinky blue light. Got a solid blue light now. We got the ASUS logo and we got no v VGA, no signal. So we're working again. Um, now it went to yellow which is sleep mode. and uh, But that's okay because now it's trying. It wasn't even trying before. Um, I can put a picture to this to prove my point later if I need to but uh, we turn it on, we get the ASUS logo and uh, the VGA no signal. So this is going to be considered fixed. It should button it up. Um, memo to myself and to everybody else who wants to work on this stuff. When you do a power supply, um, check uh, several times on your capacitor polarity. If you put a capacitor in backwards, the circuit will not work. That capacitor may explode, may bloat. Um, and if your system doesn't work, you know, go through and you can touch the different capacitors. You'll find the, the one that's backwards will get hot if it doesn't blow up or explode or whatever. So, um, you know, just again, look at the board markings, go slow, be careful, don't put them in backwards. And this is a job, you know, for what we call maybe a level one or a level two technician. This is not rocket surgery. It was a matter of opening the unit 
looking at it, seeing obvious bad caps, and having you know a power supply. The thing doesn't power, so it doesn't power power supply board where the cord goes in. Find bad caps. We found two very bad caps, and there's a few of these that are eh, a little marginal. But reality is, if I would have just changed those two thousand mic twenty five volters, this thing would have come right back to life. Um, because this is a client's, and you know for longevity to make sure that this thing lasts another five years or six years or whatever as opposed to you know uh, a year or whatever before we have to go back into this we just did the whole lot the whole batch of capacitors here this is about fifteen dollars I would suppose if you order it from DigiKey and pay full retail because that's what DigiKey does but you can get them there and uh, that's all I have to say about that so button this up and we'll consider it a victory thanks for watching have a great day